Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. This episode is the second part looking at complex retopology and we're retopologizing the strap. And it's a close look about how we deal with difficult objects like this. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. OK, so here's where we got up to last time. And if we look at a new area, the edge flow needs to follow these edges around here. So sometimes it's a good idea to just put that in to start off with and build up from there. In the same way I did up here, I followed an edge going down here and here and then built up upon those. So we can grab one of these vertices. I'll zoom in on that a bit and we can press Shift D to duplicate it and I can move it to this edge down here. I can then press E to extrude to pull it in and just follow the topology around here. And I'm lining these up so they can easily be quads. And we'll need to do something different here, obviously. And when I come up here, I'm following the topology of this object and into the middle there. Now, once we've got this line, I can join it up straight away. I'll just bring this one down to this point here. And then go to edge mode with two, select those two and fill them in. Now obviously we need another one down here, so E to extrude, pull that out and select the edges. Now that might have been slightly quicker with the poly tool, but jumping from the poly tool and backwards, there's not a lot of point. Okay, so can I get away with just selecting this one and pressing F all the way through? You can see if it's lined up that way, so F all the way through. And obviously it stops there because that's the end of the other side. But that's actually worked out quite well and it's a reasonably good topology. Have a good look around, make sure nothing's sticking out too far. And this bit here sticks out a little bit. So the way to deal with that is either to add an edge loop through here, and you've got to think whether that's worth it because that would follow all the way through here up to the top as well. So it's adding quite a lot of topology, or can we adjust this topology in some way so it fits our mesh better? So I'll select this edge loop here and pull it across this way, this one here, G to grab and move it outwards and we've followed the topology a bit better. It's not sticking out so far. We're probably not really going to see it on the silhouette. So that's married up a bit better. I'll probably just slide this one back slightly and move it just out slightly as well. Again, the silhouette, you're not really going to see the fact that it sticks out slightly there, but it does help our sort of blobbiness. There is a fair bit of blobbiness here as well. I think we're gonna get away with that, but let's just see if we can tidy it up a little bit. So up to there might help us a touch. And this one out just a touch more as well. Okay, so when I talk about this mesh extruding through the other mesh, that's all to do with your ray distance when you're baking. And we'll come on to that much later, but for those who've done a bit of this before, you'll understand what I mean. And that's the distance between your low poly mesh and your high poly mesh. You turn up your ray distance and it will catch these extra areas sticking out here. Okay, so we'll keep going with this. If I extrude down here to the other line and I think we'll have two there because there's a fair bit of undulation in here and I can now extrude this edge out rather than a line. Now I can't see where the verts are here but I can just extrude them out to what I can see along the edges here. And then in and fill these in. I can go all the way to the edge this time because because I've got that edge flow going along there. Let's fill these ones in now. So extruding a single vert around there and then just filling in, same around the bottom here. I'll just extrude that face out and then I've got that vertex just there that I can push around and extrude out to the end and fill them all in. I'm bringing this one along so it marries up with this edge here. And this one can marry up this way and then we can have a nice edge flow going around here. I'm leaving this one because it's a triangle, so I'll just come back to that in a moment. And I can probably do with an extra section here, which is actually helpful to me. So you can see there's a triangle here, but I've got an extra point here, so I can just extrude this one out to here, and then F to fill these two in. So now when I select this edge here and fill that in, and fill these in, we've got a quad base mesh here. So wherever you have a triangle like that, to break it up into a quad, you have a bit sticking out of the hypotenuse. <laughs> so the long edge, in case you've forgotten that from maths. And you usually choose the long edge, but you don't have to, you can choose any of the edges really. 
But generally speaking, you don't want it to keep as a triangle. So if I grab this and bring it in, and you certainly don't want it sort of concaving like this where it comes in. So stick it out slightly so you can see that it's a quad. Now you can see I'm going over these areas here. I don't think we can really see them on a silhouette. I suppose we can here. So you could argue that we need a dink in there, but it really is minimal and we're really close into the object here. So again, that depends on how high detailed you want to go. If this is going to be perhaps used in movies or something like that, and it's your main object, like let's say Lord of the Rings, and there's a lot of focus very close up on the ring, then you might want to dig into these areas. Now it's a bit messy in here, so how do we deal with that situation? Well, the same way we just get our edges and make sure we fill them in. So back to vertex mode, I can extrude across here. I can extrude down here, keeping to the topology of this one, but following that edge line. I'll continue this one down here to the end. Now I can't press F on this one because I've got nothing the other side, so it doesn't know which way to go. So you have to select both those two. And then on this one, because it's got something that side, it knows it needs to go this way. Okay, so we keep going with these lines and following the topology around it. That's a bit more tricky in here. There's a bit of a mess. But for now, I'm just going to bring it to this point and then keep going around. And if I need to add some in, I'll add it in in a moment. Now that joins up to that one. So I can actually select those two and just press M at center and it merges them together. Yes, I've got a triangle there, so I've got to sort that out. But let's fill that in first and come back to that triangle in a moment. What we'll do first is fill in this area down here. So E to extrude and come down this way. Now, is that sticking out enough? Yes, it is. I'll need to actually build some topology into there. And that's gonna join up with that one. I can actually select those two and press F to fill. This one needs to come out to here and that one to there. And we just need to select a couple of edges and we can slowly start sort of filling these in. Now in here, I might get away with filling that in, and for now filling these in. And let's just zoom out a bit, and you can see that there's no silhouette. It's not at any point not seeing this area, so I can probably get away with that. If you want to be really detailed in this area, we can select these two faces and inset them. It looks a little bit strange at the moment, but hopefully, we can just start moving these around and they'll snap to the insides there. But it does look a little bit messy at the moment, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got our triangle in there because we started with a triangle from our inset. And that's okay for now. I'm going to just move these around and see what that looks like. There is quite a dent in there. So when you come around to here, you're going to see less of this bit and less of this bit. So it is going to have a bit of influence if we don't, if we just go over the top of it. But again, it depends how close you're going to be because we're probably going to be from this sort of area around here. So you can just inset faces like that. It looks a little bit scruffy as topology goes. I don't think it's too bad. I'll just snap these a bit above the surface. So to the sides more. And I think that's going to be okay. Just looking at the direction and flow of some of these. Now you can see this quad in here, just here. Can you see how it's a bit distorted? So it goes lots of different ways, basically. So it's really noticeable from this direction. So that's something quite interesting, and that's where you need to set the triangles yourself so the game engine doesn't do it for you. Can you see it's across there, there's a sort of edge, and we will need that edge with the distorted shape like this. I'll bring it in and see if we can't sort it out slightly and see what it's starting to look like now. Yeah, so it's all over the place, this one. I'll undo those slightly. And at this point, I think it's best to actually select those two and press join, and then we know where that topology is going. This, this area here is a bit odd. And maybe we can bring this down, so GG to edge slide, and bring that down to the other one. That makes more sense there. So you can see I've used some triangles there, but the topology is okay because it's actually snapping to our object. The problem we're going to get is, if I press Control r to do my loop cuts, it's going to stop at this point. But that's actually a good thing. I want it to stop at that point. I don't want it following my mesh all the way through. So I'm going to leave those triangles there for that reason. Okay, let's keep going and smartening this place up. So in here, F to fill and F to fill there. We've got another triangle there that could cause us problems. But we've also got a triangle up here. 
So let's fill that in. So we've got a triangle at the top, we've got a triangle at the bottom, so somehow we ought to be able to make quads out of this. So if I press Ctrl R here, and do a loop cut across there, and also if I come into this edge here, and this time I'll just right click and subdivide, I should be able to select this mesh under here, E to extrude, and follow these quads along here, and then join it up to this one. So I'm going to bring this one up here. So I can select this one and this one, fill that in. So I've got a line going down there and I should be able to fill in here with quads. So if I select this one and press F to fill and it should go all the way up. Ah, now it hasn't gone all the way up there. So there's some sort of problem in here and that's something you might come up against. So I'll undo that. So there must be extra topology in here. So if I select all and press M by distance, you can see there's been two vertices removed. So I should now hopefully be able to press that yep, and go up to the top. And there we've got our quads going in the way, quads going up there. I'll just move some of these and adapt them slightly. So a little bit messy inside here, but I think that's going to work okay. Now we're going to need another one coming up here, following the verts along here. And once again, we've got a triangle down here. But again, I'm not seeing that as too much of an issue. So the last line we need is this one going up here. Now some of these triangles, again, don't worry too much about them. It's not great topology around here, but I've got to wait for the axe head to see what's going on there and whether I need any more topology so I can sort of cut lines from here to there perhaps. So there's some basic retopology there and I'll tidy that up when we come to link it up with the axe head. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing and that was helpful to you. Let me know how you're getting on and comment below with your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.